Hi there. Um, in this movie, I'm going to show you how to make a play button and a stop and a stop button. So, you know, when I first began learning action, action script animation, well, when I first began learning flash animation, one of the things I found most frustrating was not being able to stop my movie. It would just keep playing in a big loop. And all I wanted to do was make it stop and then be able to hit that play button again. So that's where I, what I'm going to show you how to do today. Um, and this, I'm just going to show you a quick demonstration. I can make it, I hit command return and it plays. And it gets to where that stop action is and it'll stop. And there's the stop action right here. And then I hit the play button and it plays again. And that's the action script right there for this play button. Okay. All right. So here we go. I'm first off, I'm just going to make new file and in order for this to work it needs to be an action script 3.0 file so I'm just gonna hit OK action script 3.0 and that'll play in flash player 9 or above <coughs> okay and yeah we're gonna start from scratch alright um what I'm gonna do this is I, I'm starting I'm gonna start out in the classic mode but I've moved a few of these panels around so I'm just going to go reset classic so we will we'll be starting from the same point um, first off I you have the properties panel and the library panel I'm going to pull that library panel off and I'm just gonna dock it in here you can see it's turned that got that little blue line so it's telling me it's gonna accept that and I'm gonna drop the library panel right in there okay so next I am going to I'm gonna make a little red box all right and we're gonna move it across the timeline okay box all right okay and I need some space on my timeline I'm gonna click on my timeline hit F5 just to extend that timeline and my box is here I'm going to right click on it convert to symbol for the well actually you can't see that so I'm gonna hit modify oh hang on it has to be selected in order for this to work modify convert to symbol and I'm just gonna call that box and I'm gonna make that a graphic symbol if I want to make this a um, if I wanted to make this a, a motion tween it would automatically do this for me it would give me a dialog box and say in order to make a motion tween this needs to be a symbol and I'll hit OK and it'll just go symbol number one since this is the first symbol but I've named it so I can see what I've named it box alright all right, so I there's nothing happening because I haven't added a motion tween. So I'm just going to right click, create motion tween. All right, now my timeline has turned from gray to blue. I'm just going to move my scrubber to the end, and I'm just going to grab my box. I'm going to hold the shift key down to lock it in place so it doesn't move up or down, and I'm just going to move it all the way over. And I get my properties keyframe right here, and you can see there's the the motion. All right, so. I'm just gonna name this box to this layer I'm gonna add a new layer actually I'm gonna add two new two layers one I'm gonna name button and the other I'm going to name actions okay um, it's a good thing when you're working with action script and that is the scripting language of um, a flash it's a good thing to put your actions on a separate layer okay so if I hit command return this is just going to play over and over and over. It's, it's just a constant loop. I want to make it stop. So I'm going to click on my final frame on my actions frame layer, and I'm going to hit F6. That's going to give me a blank keyframe. You can see right there. Okay. So this is the code snippets, code snippets right here, this panel right here. Okay. And this is what we're going to be using. Uh, this is what it will probably look like the first time you open it, all these six panels. Um, we're going to be working in timeline navigation. Actions is also one you might use. Uh, animation, maybe not so much in, in the beginning. But right now, I think we're just going to stick to timeline navigation. So I'm going to toggle that open. I'm going to close it. If you, another thing that I wanted to open, the actions panel. All right, I'm going to just open that up. <coughs> and then I'm going to squeeze it in the dock you know between the two of these but it's going to take up a lot of real estate all right it's okay well, I've dropped it you know I hop it over till it turned blue but it's now it's taking up too much space so now I need to get my stage back so I'm going to hover down here 
bring that up as much as I can. All right. And again, the, the, this I want to make this smaller, but that's as small as it get gets. But I usually keep my actions panel right here and just open it. But it doesn't stay open, but it needs to stay open so I can explain so you can see what's going on here. OK, so we have our again, we have our box moving across the timeline. I want to add a stop right here. So this is my actions actions window actions panel and you can access code snippets from here if this is open and you can access code snippets from here and you can access code snippets from here under Windows code snippets okay so there's plenty of places you can access it um there's a lot of things going on here in the actions frame but all, all I'm gonna really tell you about right here is this is apply block a block of comment and apply a line of comment um, I'll explain that in a second what that means okay after we get our first bit of action script on the on the timeline okay so I'm gonna click on here and then we're gonna go on a timeline and we just want stop at this frame I'm gonna double click and that's it we have our code command return and it's gonna get to the end of this timeline and it's gonna stop all right voila all right so what this is this is the code this top part is is not a functioning code it's still gonna work okay so I'm gonna close this what that is is let's see if I can get it back undo okay um, what that actually is is information this is telling you what this code does and it's commented out because that's what you see there's this little asterisk uh, slash asterisk asterisk slash and then that's what this is this is block comment and this text is commented out because if it wasn't commented out it would become black and it would just mess up your code so it's commented out so you can put whatever you want if you working with someone and you want to give them some information as to what some what you've done you can put this in here comment it out and you can comment out you know a whole block of text or use this one comment one line at a time so you can say don't touch all right and you can see it's thinking it's something else you can either you can use these commenting use that and you'll see it just grayed it out or you can type it in manually I'm just gonna hit slash slash all right so that's how that works and that's commenting you know so this is how code snippets uh, communicates with you so this is gonna stop all right okay so now <coughs> I'm going to go to the timeline and we need to I'm just gonna test this again it's gonna go to the end it's gonna stop but we have no way of making it play again so we need to make a play button okay so I'm gonna make another box alright and that's on my actions frame I'm I don't want that there I'm, I'm gonna undo that <laughs> get rid of that I'm gonna click on my button layer and I'm gonna make a button here okay so first thing I want to do is I want to convert this to a button uh, modify convert to symbol alright so now I'm gonna call this my button and you can make it a graphic symbol a movie clip button or graphic I'm gonna make this a button symbol alright now what's different about a button symbol if you double click on it instead of getting a timeline a regular timeline you get something a little bit different okay I double click on it see now we have something that has these four stages up over down hit okay up is the up state of the button when you do nothing this is what you see when you I'm gonna hit F6 here and now you in and fill these out so this red box is over up over down and hit okay I'm gonna change the color okay this is already selected so I'm just gonna click on here go to my swatch panel make that yellow and you can see it's a different color now when I hit command return the hit area the color is irrelevant okay so if I hover over and click it, you don't see that orange color because this is the hit area when I move when that little finger pops up that's the hit area okay that's how that's affected so if I open this up again and I'm going to hit my free transform I'm gonna scale this out to the right and now I hit command return you can see if I hover over there's nothing here but remember this area below this arrow now has a, an enlarged hit area I'm gonna get that finger when I roll over see so this is all hit area because that's that's where that orange area is and you see it disappears okay 
and I hope that makes sense. Hit area, hit area, and again, I'm going to resize that and bring that back down to that smaller size. All right. Okay. Well, actually, that's not quite right. So I'm just going <laughs> to hit. I'm just going to click and drag. Click on this and dra and drag. And you can see I get that little copy sign, the little plus symbol next to my cursor. That means it's copying. So now I have that hit area is red again. But just to keep with what I was doing before, I'm going to make it orange again. All right. So we have up, over, down, hit. I want to change the over. So when the cursor goes over it, it's going to change colors. All right, it's selected, so I'm going to go to my swatch panel and make it green. And it's, and it's not selected. I'm just another way to show it. I'll show you how to change the color. I'm going to click on it, click the color blue, and I'm going to click on my little paint bucket and fill that with blue. So now when I test this movie, when I when I do nothing, it's going to be red. When I hover over, it's going to turn green. And when I click, it's going to turn blue. Okay, command return. And again, we never see the orange because that's the hit area. Then whatever color you make that, it's not going to matter. It's just the size, the shape of it. Okay, so when I hover over, green. Now when I click, blue. All right? Okay, but again, this isn't plain again because I have applied no code to this yet. So it's behaving like a button, but it, we haven't given it, we haven't told this button what to do. Okay? All right. So we're going back to the timeline, back to the, we're inside the button. I'm going to click here on scene one to go back to the main timeline. And this is going to go back to the, you know, regular timeline. All right. So I'm going to click here. We have the button selected. The button is already, I'm just going to select it. And it says an action script 3.0 cannot be, action code cannot be placed directly on objects. Please select the frame or use the code snippets panel to apply code to the current selection on stage all right um just to keep things clear i'm going to click on my button here it's still selected and now i'm going to go to my actions panel i mean my code snippets or i can go here i always go here this is my force of habit but since this panel is open now i'll just go here all right here we have there's click to go to frame and stop we do not want that because when you hit the play button it's going to go to the first frame it's going to go to the frame the first frame and it's going to stop all right, we want click to go to frame and play. All right, so it's going to click. It's going to go to the frame. Well, I said frame one, the frame we tell it to go to, and it's going to play, begin playing from that state. So click, go to frame and play. Double click. All right, the selected symbol requires an instance name. Flash will create an instance name before applying the code snippet. It's just going to, I normally like to name them, but this is going to just pop up here and say it's going to call it button one this instance okay so i'm just going to hit okay so all right let me see i'm going to close this and if i click on this you can see in the instance name it says button so it said let's see if i drag this out onto the stage a new one from the library you can see this just says instance name but this is now called button one all right and that's because flash renamed it when we applied that codes that code from the code snippets panel so again I drag one of these out on the stage it's just going to have instance name this new one instance name but this new one a name has been applied button one each time I do this it's going to change the name normally I like to name these so I know specifically when I see it in the code what it is so when you see button one in the code you know it's referring to this instance of this symbol on the stage all right all right so I'm gonna click on this code here and you can see where it says button one that's referring to this instance on the stage button one all right okay so the difference in what we get here we get two parts whereas when we went and the when we made the stop all we had was information telling us what that did this one we have information is telling it telling us what this this code does and we also have instructions there's a one but there's only one thing we have to do okay so anyway click to go to frame and play clicking on the specific symbol instance moves the playhead to the specific frame frame in the timeline and continues to playback from that frame all right so 
instructions. Replace the number 5 right here. Go to and play 5. That's the default. So whenever I put this, it's going to tell me to go to 5. So right now this code will work. When I hit play, it's going to go to this frame and begin to play. But we need to change it because we want it to go to frame 1. So I'm going to change that 5 to 1 and command return and this will play. All right. So play through stopped. Okay, we're over the button. I'm going to click and it's going to go back to 1 and it's going to play. All right. Okay. Actually, I want this to look like a play button. I can either add another timeline on top of this and put the play on top or I can dig into this and add an extra line. But the thing too is it's going to change we editing the symbol. So a play button is going to appear on this here too. Okay, so if you're using different buttons, different, you have any different buttons, you want just one button to do different kind of things, you want to do this on the main timeline. But I'm just going to make this play on the inside. All right, so I'm going to click right here. I'm going to hit T for my text symbol, and I'm going to type P-L-A-Y. All right, I'm going to click the command key to line that up in place, and it's going to be blue throughout. Actually, so it disappears. It kind of looks like it disappears there over that blue stage. So I'm going to select that text and go over here to my properties panel. I'm going to make it white so it shows up on all states. All right, now I'm going to click on scene one to go back to the main stage or the main timeline. And you can see there it is. So if I hit command return, hover over, click, all right, it plays. And you can see, and it's playing from frame one. The nice thing about this is if I click on this code, I can change this to do whatever I want. I can make this frame 55 and it's just going to go right to the end. And command return test, play. See, it just jumps right at the end. All right. So I can change this number to whatever I want. I can put it in the middle, 25, command return. And when I hit play, it's going to go to the middle. Okay. All right. And. <coughs> I, you know, I talked about, I mentioned that hit area before. I can make this entire area a button. So if I click on that hit area, and I can expand this to make the entire area a button. So wherever I click on here, this is going to play. All right, so you can see that I got that little finger. So anywhere out here, it's it's play button. And that's it.